Hello everybody and welcome to the latest wave of our global barometer. Uh, this is the 19th wave. We've been running it since the start of the pandemic uh, more than two years ago. This wave we've canvassed opinions across 16 markets globally and field work was run towards the end of March. I'm going to share with you today some of the highlights. Um, clearly we are living through changing times. There's a lot of global instability. Um, we'll have a look at the impact of some kind of macroeconomic trends, um, prices, availability. So we're going to cover four key topics as we go through this around consumer confidence, the cost of living, um, uh, brand purpose and um, challenges with stock and availability that consumers are experiencing. We've already seen very clearly that brands and organisations have had to pivot dramatically in the past couple of years since the start of the pandemic and organisations have had to become very adept at um, pivoting quickly to meet changing consumer um, situations. The current situation we're living through is again proving to bring different challenges um, and brands are being forced again to reevaluate their propositions and how they can best meet the changes in consumer needs. So during these turbulent times, um, it's really important to take a pulse of consumer sentiment um, for all of our clients. We work really hard to deliver agile insights and help organisations make the best decisions they can as quickly as they can in these evolving times. So let's have a look at quickly at some of the macro topics we're going to touch up. If we start first of all with consumer confidence, we do start to see, um, and this has been the case for a couple of more recent ways, people are feeling happier than they were maybe this time last year and slightly more optimistic, um, but still financial concerns remain strong and high and people are cautious about spending. So we'll dip into that in a little bit more detail as we go through it. The other macro topic that we're looking at is the cost of living. Um, there's been lots of coverage around this um, topic globally. It's very front of mind for all consumers. So we will take a look not only at what people are feeling and experiencing, but also how is it changing, how they shop, um, what are they looking for, what are they trading off um, based on the finances that they currently have. Um, we're also going to look at supply chain. There's been again a lot of coverage of this as a consequence of some of the global turmoil uh, we're all witnessing. Uh, supply chains have been hit hard across so many sectors and this is again reshaping how consumers behave. So we will deep dive into that as well shortly. And then finally, we will touch on brand values, which is a theme we have been talking about for a couple of waves really. And despite economic challenges um, and stock and supply chain challenges, people are still um, got at the heart of how they shop. What does this brand stand for? What is its position socially, ethically, environmentally? And so understanding that this is uh, not something that can be traded off um, in current circumstances is important for all brands to understand. So without further ado, let's get started with a deep dive into consumer confidence. Um, well, I'll just share the global um, data that we're seeing this wave. So if we get started, um, we can see really global satisfaction has improved. So we've got nearly four in 10 people saying that they are satisfied with their life in the past couple of weeks. When we compare that to the barometer we ran this time last year, that was um, about 10 points lower. So there is a positive shift happening. That also is seen when we look at optimism. Um, we see four in 10 people feeling optimistic about the future. Um, it does vary notably by continent, and you can see that it is lowest in Europe at the moment and highest in the Americas. We touched earlier on how people are still worried about their finances. We still see just 25% of people say that they're confident spending money in the coming months, um, but it is an increase. It's gone up six points since this time last year. So again, some positive trends, but still quite low scores. We also asked people about whether they're concerned about their own personal financial security. 
Um, and if you have a look at the chart um, to the right, and if we focus just on the red lines for now, what you can see is just um, over four in 10 people say they are less well off than before the pandemic began. And then when we ask people to look forwards to the next three months, we see a quarter of people saying they will be less well off in the next three months. So some, you know, some big changes there um, and um, quite a lot of things for consumers to think about at the moment when it comes to their personal finances. And then the final slide in this section asks people where they are expecting to spend more money this year. And probably unsurprisingly, utility bills come top of that, with four in 10 people saying they expect to spend more on their utility bills. Now, um, this is dramatically different by market. It is highest in Europe at 54%, but actually if you look at the UK and Italy, it's seven in 10 people say they expect to spend more on their utility bills. You can also see some other areas where people are expecting to spend more. Um, some of it is more everyday, like personal care, hygiene and healthcare. And then some of it is more social, which is, you know, holidays, which many people have, have forgone and also going out to eat, um, which again is not something people were doing that much of this time last year. So we've looked at consumer confidence at a macro level. If we move on now to the topic of uh, supply chain uh, challenges and what that means for consumers at the moment, we will um, start here and we are really seeing um, that people are experiencing obviously not just the price increases in store, but also out of stock issues. And what we've done is we've had a look at this, how consumers are seeing this based on online shopping as well as in-store shopping to see um, what the differences might be. So if you look interestingly at in-store shopping, um, increased prices are noted by about six in 10, and it is less noted online by consumers, which is um, interesting. But then the next two elements are around being out of stock. Um, and again, you are seeing more evidence of people um, seeing out of stocks in-store and a bit less so online. And then two other kind of notable challenges with the in-store shopping experience. A lack of social distancing is causing challenges for some and empty shelves. And the flip side is also what we're seeing for online shopping is a delay in deliveries or in availability of click and collect. So across both channels, we are seeing uh, challenges for consumers in terms of pricing, availability and stock issues. Um, when we dig into this a little bit deeper and we ask people kind of which retailers specifically they are seeing um, products unavailable, unsurprisingly, it's the grocery retailers that are being most impacted. Again, it feels in store is more noted than online. Um, but across all of these, you see some big changes to clothing, footwear, health and beauty, wellness. Um, home furnishings and department stores. So they're all being impacted. And I think what's also very interesting is when you look at it by market, some of these scores are really high in you know, Australia, New Zealand, and then some of the European markets that we've covered, Spain, UK, Germany stand out as having bigger supply chain um, issues. Interestingly, um, as we continue the theme of in-store shopping versus online, we are seeing people um, saying they are more willing to consider going in-store now because of poor availability online. So it seems to be a little bit of a change that people are thinking, well, actually, if I go into store, I can maybe look at some different options. I know what's available and I can be more confident about taking a product away with me. When we asked people about supermarket shopping specifically and where they were having most issues, um, dry products, pantry products are uh, seeing the highest levels of stock availability issues. But then across all of these areas, you're seeing between a quarter and a third of people being impacted. So we asked people what they were going to do about the in-stock in availability issues they're experiencing and they um, largely told us that they would substitute a product. You know, so as a brand, um, there's a lot to think about in terms of 
stock availability issues and where it takes people. So people are going to look for a substitute and an alternative. Um, some people are going to go and shop elsewhere or look for that product in a different store. And then the smaller proportion of people will wait for that product to become uh, back in stock. Um, frustration levels are high. Um, over half of people say they are frustrated with stock availabilities um, and people are expecting these issues to last for up to the next six months. Um, they don't see this problem going away anytime soon. So when we ask people what they're going to do differently to help counter, um, people tell us they're going to shop in other types of stores, they're going to stock up and buy extra when the products that they want do come back in stock and then they're going to be experimenting with either different types of foods, different recipes, different options that help them along the way. And it's a um, new question we added this time which I think is really interesting is we ask people um, um, how long they could keep their household fed for based on what was currently in their cupboards and in their fridge and um, you know, most people said they could last up to about a week but beyond that most people don't have enough food in their cupboards and fridges to keep them going beyond six or seven days so um, you know, the impact of stock availability is very real and a real challenge for brands everywhere We're going to move now to the third topic, which is around cost of living. So continuing where we um, started to talk about prices and we should start, first of all, with the biggest impact, which is what we've seen around the energy crisis. So if you um, were here to join us uh, last wave, you'll have seen this was a topic we covered then um, and it continues to be top of mind with seven in 10 people saying the energy crisis and cost of rising cost of living is impacting my spending plans. Um, when we ask people the areas that they're most going to be impacted by through all the um, changes, groceries are the area that stand out the most to people in terms of how that's going to be affected, but also things like eating out, holidays, clothing. Um, there's a lot um, of impact that people are feeling across all the different categories. Um, half of people expect to spend more on their groceries over the next few months. It is the biggest chunk of extra spend that we're seeing in this study. Um, eight in 10 expect fresh fruit, fresh food in particular to see price rises um, in the next few months. And then again, when we touch on what are you going to do in the next three months specifically to accommodate this, you can see the biggest change is um, people saying they will change the brands or products they normally buy, including buying more own label. You see a third of people saying they'll visit different stores to hunt out value. Um, people will be changing supermarkets to cheaper alternatives. Um, some people saying they will shop more regularly to avoid waste and get better deals. Um, and some people saying they will shop less often, but they will actually stock up and buy in bulk. So there's some big numbers there in terms of how people will be um, changing their shopping patterns in the coming months. Um, when we ask people about what's important to them when they're shopping for their groceries, price is inevitably top of mind alongside quality um, as key drivers. Um, so it's important for brands to think about how they can offer more value but retaining a quality proposition. We've touched on how people will um, plan, expect to buy cheaper alternatives to their usual products. Around half of people say they are going to do that um, and um, a third of people say they will decrease um, their spend on premium brands. So if you are a premium brand owner um, or a slightly higher price point, um, there are some um, warning signs there in terms of uh, how people might be changing their spend and what, what you might need to do to help um, keep people aligned with your brands rather than uh, trading down to alternatives. We asked people what the activities would be that they would give up to save money 
Uh, eating out is unfortunately top of the list. We've seen the leisure centre, the leisure sector, sorry, um, hard hit already by eating out holidays. Um, again, the, the holiday sector has had a very difficult time, but again, it's you know a big, a big outgoing for families who are hard hit. Um, people are going to give up uh, premium brands, they're going to give up going out to bars and pubs and also getting in takeaways. And then we also ask people, what are the things you're not going to give up on? Uh, mobile phone contracts, top of the list. Um, great if you're in the mobile phone contract business. Um, TV subscriptions as well. And we do see eating out feature in both of these lists, which is really interesting um, for some people. It's um, something that they want to keep hold of. And then also we see um, sports and fitness activities where that ranks fifth and people don't want to give up on that. Um, in terms of financial um, hardship and support, we asked people who they would turn to if they needed help and support in the next few months. Half of people say the first place they would go to is family. Um, rather than the banks, building societies, friends or government benefit system systems, which all feature lower down the list. We asked people if they were planning any activities to reduce energy and water consumption over the coming months uh, to help them manage their finances. Some of these things um, you might argue are things that we should all be doing anyway from an environmental point of view, uh, but I think there's heightened focus on it now with the cost of energy prices going up. So um, turning the lights off, taking shorter showers, reducing the temperature of the heating, um, using eco or cold washers on washing machines and dishwashers, programming um, laundry to, to um, happen overnight at low tariff um, times of day and then also smart solutions to reduce energy and wastage. So there's quite a few things people are undertaking um, and I'm much more mindful of at the moment. So that wraps up the um, third macro topic around um, cost of living and cost of energy. Uh, the final area that we're going to look at is brand values, um, brand ethics and social kind of corporate responsibility. Again, a topic that we've touched on a few times in recent waves to understand how brand purpose remains front of mind for consumers alongside the financial pressures that people are experiencing. So if we get started on this area, we'll see, I guess, from a top line level that um, three and four people are agreeing that it's important to take time to uh, make the right decisions and invest in brands that care about um, consumers and society. We see consumers continue to tell us that brands are accountable. Eight in 10 say that they're accountable for what they do. Um, they're accountable for their societal and environmental impact. People want to know what brands are doing and they want to align with brands that share the same values. We see seven in 10 people will start using uh, or use more of a brand because of its positive social and environmental stance. Uh, but people do want more information and they want to feel uh, like communication is transparent and two way. Importantly for all brands is this impact of any negative environmental and social um, reputation damage. People will switch off. They will actively, proactively walk away from a brand that is not aligned with their values. We asked people what was important to them, and this is really topical. So, you know, sincerity, authenticity, um, environmental areas around like plastic and paper and packaging, and really brands which ha are working hard to have a more positive social and environmental impact. That also translates to people's savings and investments and how they spend their money. People want to invest in brands that align with their personal values and would turn away from brands that do not do this and do not support this. And that was everything that I wanted to share with you on brand values. So if I just wrap up now, um, thank you first of all for listening today. I appreciate there's four quite big topics that we've shared. Um, 
thank you for your questions as they've been coming through. Um, my colleague Tanya will um, take over now and answer the questions uh, that you've shared with us. But I'd like to thank you all for your time today and hopefully we'll see you um, in a couple of months for wave 20 of our barometer. Many thanks. <laughs>